So first up, let's check out my absolute vintage and antique nemesis, which is jewellery. Now, I haven't got a clue, I'll be quite honest with you, whether this is paste, cultured, plastic, or, well, I just haven't got a clue. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sets of, when I say sets, I mean necklaces and a bracelet of pearls. There are certain tests you can do, like rubbing them on your teeth to see if they're gritty or smooth. I could always poke hot needles at them, but I really don't know. So what I'm going to do with these before I make any decision at all is take them to a jeweller's. Living in Birmingham, I'm very fortunate, and if you live in the UK, you may well know about this, but we have a, a, a part of the city which is known as the Jewellery Quarter. And um, Back in the 19th century, it uh, was world-renowned, obviously, for the manufacture of jewellery, and there are still dozens of small jewellers there, goldsmiths, silver, precious metals, etc. And you can uh, go in and they're more than happy to give you some advice, possibly make you an offer, I guess. But I know that um, certain dealers who I work with uh, weigh their scrap gold and silver in there. So I will be taking all of the jewellery that I'm going to show you down to the jewellery quarter in Birmingham. Worth checking it out if ever you're in the area. It is a kind of a heritage cultural sector of the city and um this is, i think there's some museums there and so on but uh i think i'll be an absolute idiot <laughs> yeah let's not go there uh but i would be an absolute idiot if i didn't check these out just to make sure that they are paste or cultured because who would have thought that a little open salt cellar, the uh, clamshell salt cellar, would turn out to be silver, which I got checked out last week. And if you want to know what I'm on about, check the previous video. So I'm trying to keep this video to a reasonable length, so I'm not going to go into each individual item. But we also have what I think are ladies' watches. There's one... Not sure if that's focusing and there's the second one we will have a quick look to see if there's any makers marks or yeah there is something so let's have a little look and it says rolex no it doesn't <laughs> it just says stainless steel uh case uh swiss made so don't know a lot about watches, but I'm pretty sure, certain that Swiss made is a reasonable mark of quality. And it is vintage. I'm not so sure about antique. Well, it, it's not antique looking at the strap. And it says Montine of Switzerland, 17 jewels. So I don't know. Is that just cheap rubbish or is it worth anything to a collector? Again, if you know, let me know in the comments. And the second watch says Leiko 17 jewels. Now that is rolled gold. So it does have a little bit of value. So that's worth taking down the jewelry quarter and getting a price on it. They're all wind up, well, they're both wind up mechanisms. Again, that, that, don't know if that's vintage or antique, but it is rolled gold. <laughs> and it has a name inscribed on it or into the clasp which is Nora, N-O-R-A, Nora. Now, that's an old school name, so definitely kind of probably even be able to date it based on that name. It's not the kind of name you get nowadays unless it's coming back into fashion. That's quite quite an interesting little watch, that is. Wonder what happened to Nora. Next, we have a little condiment set or cruet set, and you've got the salt, the pepper, and the mustard jar with a little silver-plated spoon serving spoon for the mustard now i'm not going to undo all this it's quite securely taped up and it's set on its own little glass tray and the pattern in the glass is called hobnail glass it's probably molded i would have thought and uh value wise well 
You can pick these up online for between 10 and 25 pounds. So it's not really of the quality or the value that I want to put onto my website, the antique central dot co dot uk website so this is in the pile and i'm wondering what to do with it what would you do with it i would say it's victorian or very early 20th century at the latest uh, it's nice solid no chips or cracks but i do know one of the uh, kind of baker light style uh, screw caps for the salt and pepper does have a small crack in it and that's another good reason for not putting it on my website because I don't put damaged items on there at all. So, nice little hobnail glass antique condiment set. Next we have a straightforward piece of railway armour. And it's not that old. It's dated 2012. So, well I say it's not that old. That's uh, 11 years old now. How time flies. And it's the end. It's it's a document. Loads of technical detail in it for staff use only, as it says down there. You can see that. And it's the engineering work schedule between Bethnal Green and Marble Arch in London. So, for somebody who collects railway honour or memorabilia then that might be quite an interesting document. But it certainly isn't worth that £20 plus for the antiquecentral.co.uk website. So it's a little document, piece of railway railway honour. Somebody will be interested in it, but it's in the pile. What do I do with it? I should add value-wise, I don't know. My estimate would be anything between £5 and £15. Pounds. Next up, we have a crystal dolphin decorative item. Looking at the quality of it, it's certainly not Murano. Well, correct me if it is. There's no damage, cracks or uh, chips on it. But individually, as an item, I wouldn't price it at more than 10 to £15 pounds at the best. Again, if you know different, let me know. I think studio made, blown glass, dolphin. The next two pieces I'll show together, and they are the two Superman art prints. No age to these at all, certainly 21st century, probably the 2000s, I would imagine. And it's uh, based on the DC su superhero Superman. Talk about stating the obvious there. No great value in them. I would estimate each five to ten pounds, that's all. In fact, I think I picked these up at a car boot for about a pound each. They don't really owe me anything at all. It's just a case of finding a good home for them. Okay, next we have a little bit more Railway Arna. And it's a small collection of Seven Valley Railway magazines or Railway News magazines. They are from the 1970s, uh, 1976. And 1974, I believe. Yeah, 1974. And there are, I think there's three in that envelope. And two or three in that envelope. Now, I did actually take these to an auction. Well, a big box of them, to be honest with you. And the auctioneer didn't want to know. They don't sell individually. And they're more trouble than they're worth to put through the auction. They probably wouldn't even raise the uh, the lot fee, to be honest. So, I, you know, I came home. I actually did a private deal with the big box, and these are just the remnants that are left over. You would think, wouldn't you, that they would be of interest to railway owner or railway memorabilia collectors, given the age and the subject matter and lots of photos in them. But uh, apparently not. The Seven Valley Railways in Worcestershire, in England. It's a heritage railway centre and it has diesel and steam locomotives. And if you go back into my old videos, I actually had a day out with a, a mate of mine. And uh, it's done quite well, that video. I think it's had two and a half thousand views, which is one of the better viewing figures for my videos. So... 
If you're interested in steam or vintage diesel locomotives, then check out that Seven Valley Railway film that I made. Again, in the interests of time, we'll have a quick look at these Victorian, they are 19th century, etchings that are grouped together in the earlier montage. Now, these etchings have been pulled out of periodicals. So 19th century periodicals. Uh, and how do I know that? Well, on the back of them, I'm not going to get them all the way out. There you go. You can see the typeface from the newspaper or the periodical that they came from. So they are genuine Victorian 19th century prints of black and white etchings. They're all attractive in their own right. But as an individual item, not really worth anything. Pennies, really, to be honest. But as a small collection, then for somebody to frame up in perhaps a, a, a large frame for display, then they might be of interest to someone. The whole lot is probably only a fiver's worth. But I just don't want them to see them go to landfill. And I'm not sure charity shops would want them. They were on my old eBay shop for a while and had absolutely zero interest. So hence they've gone in the pile for disposal. Here we have a little glass, crystal glass paperweight with a flower design inside. You can see that. It certainly isn't Caithness. I've had a look for the maker's mark because quite often they do have a maker's mark and you have to look really careful for it. You know, obvious place to start is on the base. Nothing there. And sometimes they, they kind of almost hide the maker's mark inside the paperweight. I've had a good look and, and there isn't one there. It's not a real flower, sort of glass blown, Chinese maybe. Value wise, five to ten pound perhaps, hence it doesn't go on the Antique Central website. Uh, again, I am keep asking this question. What would you do with it? Answers on a postcard please. Here we have two antique etchings that have been hand painted i think they're absolutely lovely again they were in the ebay shop for probably 12 to 18 months and had zero interest which surprised me but who am i to know what should sell and what shouldn't <laughs> after all i'm only an antiques and vintage dealer but again very little value i think i've sold a couple of them uh, for about seven or eight pounds you think they get a lot more than that they don't guess it depends on the subject matter and these i think are one is uh, a malio bird and the other one is a long-legged colin or colin <laughs> colin the bird there he is colin or colin <laughs> and there we have the malio bird so they're attractive and decorative in their own right very little value in them Hence, they're in the dis pile for disposal. Here we have a pair, well, they're not a pair, matching pair at least, but a, a couple of at least vintage, possibly antique glass bottles. And the one is uh, Patterson of Glasgow, and it held coffee. And if you're of a certain age, you'll remember this, camp coffee which is probably the least coffee tasting coffee you could ever imagine. So it was one of the precursors to your instant coffees. I think it came in, well, it obviously came in a glass bottle and you poured it or had a teaspoon of it with hot water, I guess. I think I have tasted it once way back in the day, never again. Um, so there you go. No cork or lid or anything like that, but a uh, nice little and it's possibly antique glass bottle. And the other one, smaller one, is Foster Clark & Co. from Maidstone, which is down south in England. It's actually Eiffel Tower fruit juices. Now, I don't know whether that was sold at the Eiffel Tower and it was a tourist piece, or whether it's sold in England and it's just called Eiffel Tower fruit juice. I don't know. Do a bit of research on that. But either way, it's not really worth anything. A couple of three pounds, perhaps. Again, it was on the eBay store for ages. No interest. No cricks. 
uh, cricks, no, <laughs> cracks or chips that I can see. So a couple of decent little antique bottles. Maybe one for a, a props department to buy, a prop store or for TV or film maybe. But, you know, they dig these out of the ground and they're ten a penny. So pretty inevitable it was going to end up in the pile for disposal. Finally, we have a 1930s Art Deco period mirror. Yeah, it used to have some kind of decorative embellishment along the top. But that broke off, just snapped. Um, so you can see the holes for it, where it went. I don't know, again, if this focuses, but they're just there. But it's been, well, it it is what it is, to coin one of my favourite expressions. There's no great foxing to it. It's a nice decorative mirror, classically from that period, that 1930s Art Deco period. Uh and price wise because of the damage to the top although you wouldn't know to be quite honest when it was hanging on your wall i'd probably put it at around that kind of 20 pound mark but i can't send it to vintage cash cow because they don't accept glass i don't really want to put it onto the website because of the damage as such that's on the top so therefore it's in the pile for disposal so a classic little 1930s art deco period war mirror so there we go a dozen items or so and a bit of a dilemma what do i do with them at the moment i'm thinking there's more than a strong possibility i will donate them because i am a great believer in karma what goes round comes round uh, do a good deed and you get one back I don't know, i've just sort of always experienced that throughout my life so that's that's what I'm thinking at the moment. But please let me know in the comments below what you would do with them. And obviously, if you're interested in buying any of them, drop me a message and we can, I'm sure, as viewers or subscribers, we can uh, come to some mutually beneficial arrangement where you get a great deal and I don't take them to the charity shop or the landfill. So, I think that just about sums up the film. Please, to support our community and channel, please like, comment, share, subscribe. But above all else, most important... Of, most in, blah, blah. <laughs> it's been one of those days today. Most important of all, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>